once again, uh, I would like to welcome everybody who joined us here for the e honor presentation. Uh, the, today we have uh, two amazing awards for of adventurers. First award, which we just had, was Putty Gates. In case you missed that, don't worry. We have a we will have a YouTube link, and also it will remain on Facebook. The second award is um, it is uh, it is Honeybee. So uh, for everybody who just joined us, a very warm welcome. Our Zoom room uh, here is full, and on Facebook we have at the moment, well, uh, a lot of people, I can tell you that. Uh, let me just make sure I give you the right number. We have uh, 263 people. For, uh, so please um, make sure you have your downloaded um, a worksheet that will help you go through this award. At the same time, uh, we're asking parents to stay close as we need your help as well. Let's bow our heads and pray, and then we're going to hear from presenter, she'll tell us a little bit more about herself. Dear God, thank you so much for the time we can be together. And thank you so much for a beautiful, beautiful uh, truth we were able to learn in a, in a, in a previous work, uh, uh, workshop. We just ask at this stage that you pour the Holy Spirit on all of us. At the same time, we're asking God, if it's your will, place the hand of healing upon those who are not feeling so well at the moment. Dear God, give them strength and give them healing and health. And we ask, dear God, uh, that, um, that, that you can help us in a time as this, and uh, we pray uh, that um, we can learn much more about your creation, but also about you, Jesus, as we go to the next award. We pray in this your beauty, you know, your beautiful name, Amen, Amen. All right. So uh, uh, before you share the screen, please tell us a little bit about you, and then after that, we can go to the screen. Hello, everybody. I'm Sandhya, Sandhya Joy. Greetings to you all from Irish Mission. I live in Clifton. This is a small town in Galway City, which is in Ireland. So I live with my husband, Abraham Tarian. <laughs> we have two girls, Rachel and Ruth. Excellent. We are involved in uh, Adventures and Pathfinders in our church here in Galway. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. And now let's go to the screen. And we're going to go straight to honeybees. You need to know I was looking forward for this award all week. Uh, uh, because my father used to be a, a beekeeper. Uh, so um, I wanted to uh, just see and learn more new things about honeybees. And here we are. We, we can see your screen. We just need to go to the presentation mode. And um, Thank you, Pastor Dan. Oh, excellent stuff. Excellent. Can Thank you hear you. me? Can you yes, hear me? Can. Yes. When you said that your father was a beekeeper, I was saying that you, must, you should have presented this. Uh, uh, no, 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 really. Uh, I was, I, I'm professional in eating honey. Um, <laughs> I, I did, I did help, uh, har you know, I, I don't know even what a right English word is, a little bit of harvest honey and, and, and go visit the bees with my father, but um, I, I don't know as many facts as I should know to present it. Thank you. <laughs> but you know what? I'm very delighted with this because I don't think I know as much as you know. But I'm trying to do present something that I know. But if I'm stuck and if anybody has some questions, I'm sure you'll be there to rescue us. Yes, uh, we will all be here to rescue everybody. So everybody who is with us, make sure that you post in chat your comments, questions, and we'll be here to help each other uh, teach this beautiful award. Right. I also have Mr. B here too as a backup to support me. You'll see him if I'm stuck, okay? Right. So today's award is Honeybee. So the curriculum part of this is actually connected with my world section. And the purpose of this award is to understand God's insects. And this award is mainly for the helping hand section. However, don't worry if you're not a helping hand class student. Everybody can enjoy, even if you are as small as a little lamb. So everybody's welcome, even though it's a helping hand award. Now, let's look at the requirements that you need to get done to get this award. So there are seven requirements, as you can see on the screen. So we will be going through those seven sections. We'll be able to attain most of it today. However, there will be a couple of sections you may have to follow up and do to complete the award. As we go on, I will explain that to you. So first, we're going to look at the several verses in the Bible that speak about bees. So we know that in our Bible, there are several verses which mentions about bees. Can you remember any of those Bible verses? 
If you do, put them in the chat section, please. Or if you have a piece of paper, write them on. So we're going to see a couple of verses in the Bible that mentions about bees. Sorry, my screen is not moving. That's right. As you're trying to figure out what's happening, we have a, a already a Bible text which I'm mentioning, uh, Isaiah 7, Judges 14, 8, Deuteronomy 1, 44, and many more texts, Psalm 119, uh, verse 103. Wow. Well, Excellent. Uh, Very good. I'm impressed. And I think somebody hit one of the verse that I have here today. Let's look at the first verse here that I have for you. So Psalms 118, verse 12, it says, They surrounded me like bees. They went out like a fire among the thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. Psalms 118, verse 12. The second verse that I have here is one of the verses that somebody had in the chat box. It's Judges chapter 14, verse 8. After some time, he returned to get to her and turned aside to see the carcass of lion and behold, a swarm of bees and honey were there in the carcass of the lion. I'm sure you all know who that verse is mentioning about. If you remember that, please mention it in the chat box. I'm sure you're writing down there, it's Samson. Right. The story of Samson in this section, we see here that he had gone to visit his future wee wife. He wanted to marry a girl from Philistine. So he took his parents and he went up to see her. From there, it looks like he had wandered away from his parents and he might have gone near a vineyard somewhere and there a young lion, very furious, came to attack him. However, the Spirit of God was with him and he was able to attack this lion back. It says he tore the lion and he was able to protect himself. He left there, he went, but another time he went to see the, the Philistine lady, he remembered this because he knew that was not a simple thing to be escaping from a lion. So he went to see what must have happened to that lion's dead body. And when he went there, that's what it says. It must be that the lion's body decayed and the skeleton was there and the bees could have made a hive there and found. And there was a swarm of bees and he found that there was honey in it. So he took some, he ate some, he went and took it to his parents. So that's the reminder of that verse. Now, let's look at our next requirement number two. It says, draw a honey bee and tell how it is different from bees and other insects and color the picture. Now, if you have a piece of paper, can I ask you all to take a piece of paper and let's see if we can draw a simple honey bee or a bee. So it's not going to be a realistic picture, but we'll draw a simple bee. Have you all got your paper? Are you ready? Some of them, yes, some of them, no. All right. Maybe some of them are going to just observe it and draw it later. That's right. Okay. okay, so if you have a paper, you can draw along with me now while I explain it. If not, you can just observe it and you can draw it later. It is so simple. So let's see number first step. Draw a little circle. Imagine that that's going to be the head of the bee. Okay, so draw the little circle. Right? We're going to move on to the second step. Yes, because we don't know how much time will take them to do the each circle. If you're just able, maybe just to uh, take them step by step, describe, and then and then after the presentation, maybe we could take a little bit of time and then uh, uh, and draw it. But but just because we don't know how much time will take, you just take them. Sure. Step by That's step. a good idea, Pastor Dian. Okay, so second step is you're going to draw. Imagine that that's going to be the body of the bee. 
So that's going to be a bigger circle, but you're going to draw a U. So under the circle, just draw a big U. Make it a little bigger than the head. So that will be the body. And now the biggest challenge is over. Now, the rest is very simple. The third step, draw some stripes. So draw across it, make it a little curved so that you get a circular feeling, okay? Fourth step, you have the body full now. Do a little dance to make the eyes. That's how I look usually when my kids draw me as a step number four, just to let you know. <laughs> right. Now then we have, a, I think, I, I think they let us put the next step to complete it. They put a little smile on the face and that completes you, Pastor Tijan. I think that's what you look like with a smile. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Exactly. Now, we'll, we'll leave there. We're going to draw a honeybee now. So then we're going to put the two wings next, okay? So two wings and the two sides of the head, right from the center there, we can make it two wings. In the next step, draw two more wings right below the upper wings. That's more or less there. Now you can draw the two antennas, okay? So right at the top of the circle, at the head, pull out the two lines and just draw small little circles there. That would be the antenna. Doesn't it look like a bee now? Does it miss anything? Yes, we have one more small little part. At the end of the big circle, the you, the body, you have to draw a little V. So write a little V connecting to the body and that will form the stinger. That's it. You're drawing your bee now, so okay? So that's ready. All you need to do now is to color it, okay? So that's how to draw a simple bee. If you have finished it, you can lift them up later at the end of the finished talk, we will lift it up, okay? Now we'll move on and see the next. For some reason my screen doesn't go easily to the next one. Uh, maybe using arrows would help. Um... Yep, so many. Uh, well, uh, uh, people are, uh, uh, some of them are drawing and um, they did follow step by step. And I'm sure this would be a very good craft exercise uh, to, to try mm -hmm. at home uh, if, if, you, if you did not manage uh, to go um, do it as you were, as you were instructed. Uh, so let's. Let's try now presentation mode and see what happens. Okay, so now we have, see, we saw how to draw a honeybee. Now we're going to see the different parts of a bee, okay? Like any other insect, honeybees also have more or less the same section of bodies. So they have three sections of the body. So your head, thorax, and abdomen, okay? So you can see a rough figure. Now I'll show you next figure, much closer up view. So we have the head, and the next middle part is a thoracic, which is of course the chest. And the last part is the abdomen. So they are the three main sections. Now on the head, you can see eyes. They have compound eyes, big compound eyes. And then you can see there two antennas. And then we go to the thoracic cavity section, we can see the wings. So they have the wings there and they have the, the, their legs are starting from there on the thoracic, you can see three pairs of legs on each side. So totally they have six legs. If you look closely, you will see that the last leg, the leg has little yellow bulging portion. That's called the pollen sac, okay? Now then at the end of the abdomen, towards the end, we start the stringer. So that's again there here showing the three sections, showing the internal parts. We won't go into the details of that. So there's six legs and three sections, all right? Now, just a close-up view of the face of the bee. It's very hairy, can you see? Can you believe it actually? The bee's eyes also have hairs. So all this hair is required because their main job is to collect the pollen. So it will attract and get all the pollen. See, that's the close-up view of the bee's eyes. Can you see all the hair? So these all help with collecting the pollen. So that's the close-up view of the pollen sack. So they have to collect all the pollen. They don't have a shopping bag. 
they do go shopping to every flower and collect all the pollen and nectar, but they need a bag. So nature has provided its own bag. So if you look at it, that's where they collect the pollens. Now that's the close-up view of the abdomen. So it's all over hairy if you look at it. That's the bee's wings. You can see there is kind of semi-transparent transsectional lines in them. This is the close-up view of a bee's stinger. I'm sure this is the part that everybody's afraid of. But let me tell you, when I studied this bees, I said the bees are supposed to be the gentlest creature. They don't really have this stinger to come and attack you. They don't mean to do that. They only bring it out and take it out if they are threatened. So generally, they are considered to be very gentle creatures. I, I, I would uh, like to say that I experienced that stinger quite a few times. Uh, and so if you ever get chased by the bee, that is uh, the most gentlest creature, as we just heard, I would suggest you run towards the bush or some greeny area. And, and when, you, when you go in, actually they lose you. So just to let you know, I became a professional for, uh, for running from the bees. Uh, but, uh, but certainly, thank you so much for these parts. Uh, just a little bit more information for the kids which are watching and our adventurers. Uh, if I remember properly, you are able to see the pollen on the legs of the bees when they're carrying it, is that right? Yes. And, and even today, uh, for example, if you went to the garden and you saw a bee, you would actually be able to see is he carrying anything or not carrying anything, is that right? Yes. Yes, excellent. Right. Now, thank you for that. Now, how are the bees different from other insects? So I know that in the last few weeks, you had a couple of awards on different insects. If you remember, I'm sure you remember, you can just Put them on the chat box again. So it was the ants, the ladybugs, right. So let's look at now. This is the chart with few insects there. So we have the ants, we have cockroaches, we have butterflies, ladybugs, beetles, grasshoppers, so many of them. They're all insects, okay? So how is this different from other insects? So here I have a picture of honeybee and a butterfly. So looking at the picture, I don't think it's, it's, I have to explain much. It is self-explanatory. You can see that the butterfly on the top and the honeybee down, you can see. So the wing, both has wings. The butterfly is more colorful. Look at the different types of butterflies on the other side of the picture. So many different colors of butterflies. You can see different colors and different designs of them. Now the honeybee's wings are not that colorful. They also have the three sections of the bodies. They have antennas, as you can see. Their legs are slightly different, but they're more larger in size and attractive. Now, there are different types of butterflies as well. Now, let's go to the next insect. You are an expert on, the, on this, I know that. So again, you can see clearly on the ant, the three sections of the body, like the honeybee. You can see the six legs. You can see the two antennas, right? The head shape is slightly different from the ants and the honeybee there. So that's, there are so many different varieties of ants as well there. Now we go to the ladybugs. You can see the ladybugs are very colorful. They have spots of different numbers. They're different, the shiny looking, the swings look hard. Now look at the honeybee there. So their wings are different from the ladybugs. They also have the same six legs. They also have antennas. So there are more similarities, but even though they're similar in the anatomy of the part, they're slightly different. In fact, hugely different. You can differentiate clearly, isn't it? Now, this is something that's more challenging, I think. Sometimes some of them maybe get a bit confused between a wasp and a honeybee. Are they same? No, they're again totally different. So wasps are completely different. They look very alike, but they are also different. They have their own so many types of species. Look at the wasp and the honeybee's bodies. The wings are more or less same. Their antennas are slightly different. The legs are more or less same, but the color and everything is different. Let's say in detail about their differences, okay? So a honeybee is more fussy. 
but I was as little, has very little hair. So we know that the honeybee is full of hair, even on its eyes. But wasp has very little hair or sometimes no hair, okay? How does the bees help the humans by pollinating our plants? How do wasps help? They help humans by eating other insects. I think I like that part. So it will clear away some of the insects that I don't want. I'm scared of. But bees will help by pollinating. Now. Bees eat pollen. What do they eat on? So eat pollen and nectar. What do wasps eat? They eat the human food that is lying around. The bees are gentle in nature and rarely sting. As I mentioned above before, they're very gentle in nature. They're not intending to come and sting you. But as Pastor Jan said, it doesn't mean that you can go and go closer to a bee and try to be friendly with it by touching it or anything because they get afraid. They're not trying to hurt, intending to be uh, hurting you, but to protect themselves, they're so scared that they try to sting. Okay? So that's why he said, run away if bees coming. Okay? So just because I said it's general in nature, just don't treat it like how you go and pet a dog or a cat. Okay? So stay away from it. But they are very gentle. However, was was are very aggressive and they're ready to sting. So be more careful of the wasp, okay? Now, the bees, the legs are usually hidden when they are flying. So they tuck it up and you can't see the legs when they're flying. However, the wasp, the legs are hanging down when they are flying. So you can see the differences now between a wasp and a bee. I'm sure now next time when you see a bee or a wasp, you're going to try and identify and make sure you're going to get it right. Now let's go into different types of bees. Are there different types of bees? Yes, there are many different types of bees, okay? So one of the bees here, as you see, this is called a blueberry bee. So this also has multiple species. The main thing of this blueberry bee, as the name specifies, its main job is to pollinate the blueberry plants. Now, we have a mining bee. Just as the word describes it, it's mainly digging on the ground. This also has around 1,300 species of its own. So they mostly dig on the ground. Now we have, next one is a bumblebee. I think you're more, you might have heard more about this bee. So yes, this also has different species, around 250 different species. They're social bee, okay? The mining bees are more um, solitary. They live on their own. Whereas bumblebees are more social. They live in colonies, but as few as 50. Okay, so they're not huge colonies like the honeybees, but they have around smaller colonies of around 50. They're smaller in size, and they're also soft, ha soft hair, like a furry one. And they also feed on nectar and pollen. So they're closely resembling the honeybee type, but they're more uh, softer, okay? Now this is a leaf cutter bee. As its name signifies, it shows it that it's an expert in cutting leaves. Actually, I remember one of these has visited my garden because some days ago, some time ago, when I went to my garden on my rose plants, there was big, big cuts. It didn't look like a caterpillar type of cutting. And I was looking to see if there was a caterpillar. I couldn't find any caterpillar, but every day I could see that some, like somebody was cutting the leaf. And yes, I'm sure it is this person who was doing that. They can clearly, very, they're very good in cutting the leaf. They cut it out and then they take it, carry it with them very safely to make their hive and to fill into their hives, okay? Now the leaf cutter bees, there are around 1,500 species. They make holes, they they're require existing holes. They're found in the summer backyard. You'll see mostly in your backyard of this. They're friendly, they're very efficient, and they're tireless. They're better pollinators than the honeybees. However, they have very short flying range. Only go up to 300 feet, that's their range. We'll see one more bee that is a carpenter bee. There are around 500 species of this 
um, carpenter bees, they mostly burrow into the thick plant materials. So as its name signifies, they have the nest in the burrows into the wood or the thick plant material. Now, that's the carpenter bee's nest. That's the leaf cutter bee's nest. You can see the leaves tucked in there. And that's a honeybee's nest of the swarm of honeybees. As our award is on honeybee, let's now see honeybees. So one of the honeybee is a western honeybee and there's the scientific name is Apis mellifora. These are invertebrates, which means they have, they don't have an external skeletal system. These are herbivorous, means they are vegetarians. So they eat on pollen and nectar and stuff like that. The lifespan varies and the, the queen might live up to five years and a worker bee might live up to nine months, depending upon the season. But in summer months, they might live to only six or seven weeks, maybe. Now, they are very social and cooperative insects. In fact, it is this social cooperative nature of these honeybees that is helping them to sustain and live longer, comparing to the other bees, which are solitary. So there are a few different types of honeybees. One is European bees, also called as Western honeybee. This is probably the one that we are going to find more in this part of our country, so as the name Europe in this place. We have next to an Asian honeybee, more found in Asian countries. We have dwarf honeybees, we have giant honeybees, we have Kosnikov's honeybees. I won't go too much in the details of these different honeybees, but because we have to go in detail about the colony and the three types of bees. So the third requirement is within a bee colony, name the three types of bees. So let's see in detail about that. So let's look at the picture here. So the three people in the colony are a drone, the queen, and the worker. So their name directly signifies what their role is. So worker bee is the main worker. Queen is like the queen. She is the queen of the colony, and she is the leader. And drone is the male. The queen and the workers are females. The drone is the male. Now, this is a close picture of a worker bee. She is at work. She is very hardworking. So the worker bees are the bees that we normally see around our gardens. We might rarely see the others, but the most bees that we see around in our life are the worker bees. They go out for food. So they collect pollen and nectar from different flowers and take it back to their hive for the rest of the group. And that, in that process, they also help with pollination, carrying pollen from one flower to another flower. Now, worker bees are female bees. Their another job of them is to build the hive. So not only do they build the hive, they also protect the hives. So they do the garden duty as well. Now the worker bees also clean, they're very tidy, they clean up their hive. They also help by keeping regulating the temperature of their hives. How do they do that? Do they have a cooler or heater or air conditioner? No, they use their wings. So they clap their wings and circulate, by beating the wings, they circulate the air. And that's how they do that. Now, the bees, amongst themselves, the worker bees, they have different job descriptions. I'm sure you all help in your homes, but different age groups, we know that there is different types of jobs. So just like that, in the worker bees, according to their age, they have different job responsibilities. Like how, when you are small, your mom would want you to clean your bedroom first, make your bed before you start making others' bed. So just like that, a one to two day old bee, their first job is to clean their own cells. So they start with cleaning by their own cells when they're born. So they clean the cell that they're born in. Then they move also keep the, their hives warm. When they're about three to five days old, their job is to feed the other larvae which are growing. So they might carry food and feed the other larvae. It's very interesting. They feed the bigger ones before feeding the small ones, okay? Next one, when they're around six to 11 days old, they, they, they're allowed to feed the younger larvae. So just like moms will not want you to be, feed a newborn baby, whereas when they become a toddler, you might be able to assist. So when they're smaller, it's the bigger bees 
that would be feeding them. So they start helping in the feeding. And when they're around 12 to 17 days old, they are given the next job, they get promotion. They start producing wax, they carry food, they start helping in building the combs, and they also take undertaker duties. What is undertaker duty? Yeah, sometimes there could be some dead bees there. So they have to carry that and take them out, okay? Now at around 18 to 21 days old, they are protected, they get the guarding duty. So they can be like the soldier guarding their hives, okay? Remember, they're still not allowed to go out. They have to be mature enough to go out. So from day 22 onwards, to the rest of life, they are free now. They can go out, fly out of the hive to collect pollen, nectar and water, and come back, which is needed for the colony. So that's a very nice description of job responsibilities of the worker bee. The worker bees, as I said earlier, they leave up to four to nine months during winter. But a worker bee, which is born in summer, I think is so sad. You think that the summer, they have a lot of pollen and a lot of food around, they live longer. But unfortunately, they don't live long in summer because they have so much pollen out and so much work to do. They have to collect a lot of pollen, save for the winter. They have a lot of duties. So they die of exhaustion. So they work so busy that really they don't have rest at all. And then they die so quickly within six weeks around that. Now, here is the next member of the colony. She is the queen bee. You can see she is like the one in the queen. She has the crown. Sorry, she doesn't have the crown. I was just trying to exaggerate. But she does behave like a queen, okay? There is only one queen in the colony. She may live up to five years. Now, she is the leader. She produces some chemicals, which is called the queen substance, which guides the behavior of all the bees. So everybody in the colony do their jobs and do their works and move around as per her instruction. She doesn't have a mic and announce. She produces some chemical substance, which gives them guidance as to what they're to do. Now, what does the queen do? She has a simple job. Guess what? Look at the picture and tell. Maybe you can put down the chat box. What's her job? Yes, lay eggs. She lays so many eggs that will become the next generation. She may lay up to even 2,000 eggs per day. And she is like an egg laying machine. She lays the entire life by feeding on royal jelly, which is a protein rich secretion. Now the queen bees, if in case the queen bee dies, the worker bees will replace her very quickly by feeding another larva with some royal jelly and then the, the, the larva will develop ovaries and turn out to be a queen. And the bees will also make the, uh, feed this, this royal jelly is actually yellow substance made up of digested pollen or honey, in honey or nectar. Now, if by any chance when the bee comes out, there is many other bees formed by in, like queen bee comes out, she will make sure the rest of them are removed. So her first job is actually to destroy any other queen bee that is developing. Or, and if there is another queen, they will fight to death. And she, one of them will take control. There can only be one leader. Now the third class section of the colony is the drone bee, which is the male. They are waiting to mate with the queen and after which they die. And then if they don't in that process, otherwise like if they are not mating, they might be kicked off from the hive after the fall comes because they don't want too many bees in the hive for the, uh, for the winter because they might not have enough food for a big gang. So they will expel all these extra drones. Now we're moving on to a fourth requirement, which is to explain and draw the life cycle of a honeybee. So we're going to look at the honeybee life cycle. Just like the other life cycles of other insects, this also has a lot of similarities in here. So we're here, the queen bee will lay eggs. Okay, only the queen bee will lay eggs. So she will lay egg into each of the cells. Okay, so she can remember, she can lay up to 2,000 eggs per day. So then that's a close-up view of an egg that's getting growing bigger. And now, the next stage is larva. 
So the egg is in each cell, is fed by the worker bees. They go and give them special, rich, nice food. They dwell in it, they eat a lot in the stage. So after three days, a larva will actually develop and they get on weight even five times. And after that, they even get 1,500 times bigger than their normal size. They eat so much. So by six days, they are 1,500 times more than their original size. And then they go, and let's see more close picture of the larvas here. See, that's the larva there, getting bigger. It's getting bigger. You see, it's getting bigger. Now, another, now, now slowly they go into a pupa stage, which unfortunately I might not be able to show because the worker bees will cover the nest, the, the cell. So they cover it and they go into sleeping stage. But this is just an open view where we can see what is happening. So while in the pupa stage, if you are able to remove it and see each day, they are actually developing their legs, their face, their head, hands, everything is developing, okay? So if you take a cross-sectional view of a pupa stage, this is what you might see. You see their legs developing, the color changing, yeah? Now, it's, now when it is ready to pop up, this is my, how it look. Then slowly they'll pop up the covering and they will start coming out. It is now. This is a larva. There are different stages. You can see larva growing big, 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 and into getting into closer to an adult. So let's see there now. So first, the queen lays eggs in a cell. It grows with the rich food. It becomes a larva. Larva grows bigger, 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 and then a covering comes on top of the cell, and that's the pupa stage. And finally, she gets out when she is adult. Now, what are the time span? So the egg might be up into three days, then by six days, you can see that's the size. By day 10, that is the size of the larva. Now day 14, she's in the pupa stage. By day 18, she's ready. Any day from now, she can come out. And then day 21, she's an adult bee. So you can just make draw this life cycle and you can make your own craft. You can make a hexagon shape so that indicates like a half shape and you can put a little pin down there so you can rotate and see the life cycle of a honeybee you can print the picture but for the requirement it says to draw so maybe you can just um in a simple way draw the different stages of the honeybee now we're moving on to our fifth requirement what is the purpose of the scout bee dance what's this dance and bee do beans dance what kind of dance could that be let's see Yes, bees do dance. They have the special dance. It's also called as vocal dance. It's the worker bees that do that, okay? So the honeybee workers perform a series of movements, often referred to as a vocal dance. What is the purpose of this dance? It is to teach the other workers the location of food source far away from the hive. So look at here. If you see it, the bee is doing, going in the circle portion of the food source. She's trying to tell the other members where the source of the food is. So one, the movement is very important. One second is equal to one kilometer, roughly. So what happens is the bee, when she finds a nice source of food, a big section where she can get nice pollen, she will come back, she won't keep it a secret. She will come back to her home and she will come to her sisters and brothers and just and then tell them, show them. So now she'll sit on top of another bee, worker bee, the sister, and she'll start making a movement, okay? And by that, she's alerting every other worker bees or the bees that she has a message to tell. What is the message? Yes, I have found a good source of flowers, pollen, nectar. So when she does this movement, all the other bees get attention. They start listening. They listen very carefully because they want to go there. So when everybody's attention is obtained, she stops that and then she starts a vocal dance. So she goes in a particular motion. It's very important. Her movement is showing which direction they have to go to get the food. This is actually done in relation where, with where the sun is. So she'll go in round. If you look at the numbers, she'll go in. I'll give you another picture there. So she goes from one loop to the loop. So which direction she goes, that's the direction where the other bees have to go in search of the food. She can tell 
um, depending upon the, big, the bigger the circle, the bigger the shape, it means the food is further away. So the other bees are very closely watching how big the loop is, how she's moving, the angle at which she's moving. It's also important, it's not only the moving, the, uh, the bees also bring some pollen with them or some smell with them as well, so that the other bees know the quality of the bee that is there and that they can go exactly to the same flower, okay? So they're also very good quality controllers, I think. Now, you can see it's in relation to the sun, the flower source is there, they come to the hive and show to everybody else. Let's see now, are bees just helping us in pollination or something else? We get honey. I'm sure every one of you love honey. And you know, I don't have to explain more about it. Now, they also give bee wax, they can make bee wax and other products like royal jelly, bee pollens, propolens, bee venom, so many other things. We won't go into detail of these in this award because this is not a bee award, this is a honey bee award. So we're just gonna to move to the next part. We'll just quickly look at what is pollination, okay? So bees collect pollen from one plant and carry to, when they're going to collect nectar from the other plant, they accidentally put some pollen there as well. That's how they help in pollination, okay? What is the importance of this pollination? A lot of crops get pollinated by honeybees. So you can look at all those fruits and vegetables. We get all that done. The number one helper in this is the bees. The bees help pollination. That's how we get all these fruits and vegetables. Look at them. That looks so yummy, so fresh and good. But imagine if bees were not there, because today we know that the bees are endangered. Bees are dying, they are not surviving. A lot of species are already gone. So bees are ending. Imagine if there was no bees. What if there was no bees? What do you think will happen? Can you write in the chat box? What will happen if we had no bees? This is what our shops will look like. The first one shows, look at all the fruits and vegetables. But if we, the bees all go extinct, we will have very little fruits and vegetables. So somebody is asking as well, what do the bees eat? If you can try to give us that answer. So bees, yes, very good, because they, they go to different flowers and collect all the pollen, and they collect the nectar as well. They, they bring it home, and they actually digest and they make different products up from, from those things. So they make bee bread out of it and they also have made royal jelly out of it. But the royal jelly is only fed for one to three days of the larva. But the queen gets fed on the complete her life cycle for five years, whatever, with the royal jelly. But the other worker bees make this bee, bre bee bread, which is made up of this pollen, nectar, and all the digest materials together, they make a different make things. So that's what they eat on. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, so no bees, no food for us as well. So we need to help the honeybees. How can hit kids help save the honeybees? Do you think you have a role? Do you think you can help save these honeybees? Let's see. Now, you can make a bee water. So here I have Mr. B getting us, showing us some bee water here. So you can make a bee water in your backyard so that the bees can get some water, okay? I think you can't see it here, but you can look at the picture there. So that shows like where you can keep some water for the bees. Then you can have plant many flowers in your garden, okay? So there's a lot of flowers for the bees to come up and take nectar and pollen. So. Other things that can be done are stop using pesticides, plant a bee-friendly garden, create a native garden, buy local honey. So when there is more demand for honey, there'll be more people uh, making bee, bee, bee harvesting. You know, they might make, cultivate and grow bees. Then you can support the local beekeepers and build your own native bee house, okay? The bee saying, help me. You can turn all the flowers into money to save bees from extinction. Now we're in the sixth requirement, which is to make two crafts about bees. 
I have put here some simple crafts that you can do at home. We are also putting up the step-by-step -step process of some of the crafts on the website, which you can download later if you are stuck. But they're very self-explanatory. One of them is a toilet tissue. You can see the finished roll, or you can use it with the cardboard. Very simple. You can create and make these these. You can use a cup and make this little craft. There are some more cute little crafts for kids. But you can get the details of some of the crafts on the website that we can upload later. That's a bee puppet for kids. Now, you can also cut down the used toilet tissue rolls and make a little beehive. You guess what's in the middle there? I think that's a Kinder Joy. The cover of that, you can just put a pipe cleaner and make up that little bee there. Now you can also make a bee habitat, like a bug hotel. You can make a bee hotel as well. And then you will be attracting bees there. You can make a little bee puppet. Now, my daughters made these little bee puppets the other day. And they give this there. Okay, maybe you can see, is it? Okay, we'll finish the slides then. Right. The last one, craft that I suggest you can do. If you're a little lamb or a smaller class, you can do the smaller crafts. But I suggest the helping hand um, class, you might be able to do this little craft. You don't have to, but if you wish, you can do it. Uh, you can make a lap book. So what is a lap book? You take a little thick chart, fold it like that. I just showed the first picture there. So you have like a book, you can open it with the cover, decorate it outside, and then you can put all these requirements, all the different facts about honeys, honeybees there. <clears throat> and you can make little flaps, different shapes. All information can be condensed into one little page. You can close it then back, and it'll be like a lab book, tucked into your file, very neatly kept with all the information. And it'll be very interesting. You can show it. Anytime you have to do a presentation, you can just take it out. So I think it's a great idea for the helping hand class students to actually do a little lab book about bees, honeybees. And the last requirement is observe bees if possible. As Pastor Jan said earlier, you must be careful if you're going to observe the bees. They are gentle in nature. However, you have to be very careful, okay? Because if they get frightened, they might sting. So stay at a distance and enjoy the nature and if you see a bumblebee or a honeybee or any type of bee, observe them, okay? Now, because of lockdown, I know some places you might not be allowed to go out. In that case, you can watch little videos on the YouTube on bees, on honeybees. So many videos are there. But when the weather is all, when all the lockdown is over, when you're able to go out, go for a walk like Winnie the Pooh, out in the nature and enjoy. That completes our B award. Now, what does it mean to us as adventurers? Be a believer and become a worker bee for Jesus. So we need to become like a worker bee for our Lord Jesus. To be that, we need to be obedient, be pure, be true, be kind, be respectful, be attentive, be helpful, be cheerful, be thoughtful and be reverent. Any questions? Thank you very much for, the, for that presentation. Uh, that was beautiful. Uh, we're gonna uh, just uh, for a moment stop sharing the screen. Uh, that's right. Uh, uh, just to remind everybody uh, that a worksheet is available for download. We posted the link. At the same time, we would love to see your crafts being uh, produced mm -hmm. at the same time shared. And uh, if I'm right, you have some there. That's right. So we have some little craft there here, okay? Now how clearly you can see it, okay? We have a little bee here, made of paper. We have a little beehive. A little beehive from the plastic cup, if I'm right? Yes, it's a plastic cup. Rachel made that. And there's little puppets that Ruth made. It can be put on your finger. I think she made it for her finger size. So. I have to try it on my little finger. There you go. 
Wow. There you go. Okay. So she made one for each finger. So then you can do your puppet story. You can put a black gloves on your hand and then do that. Okay. Please. Finger. Okay. And then now we also, you can also make a mask if you like. There you go. There you go. A V mask. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, so, can I say a big bus now? Very a yeah. big bus. Maybe when you're unmuted, you can all say a big B bus. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, for everybody who does produce craft, uh, as you need to do it for your requirement, uh, please also take a photo and send us the photo on, on my email. We would love to share it during the week if it's possible. Uh, so we just posted my email in the chat room, which is dan at adventist.uk. Dan is spelled D-E-J-A-N. Uh, so uh, once again, big thank you all uh, for uh, 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 for presentation and hard work. And there is a few small questions we would like to ask, if that's right. They're saying if the bee and a wasp come to the water point together, will they, uh, will they hurt each other? We'll have to wait and see. We will have to wait and see. So in other words, you do not know that yet. That's right. Answer in my head, if I remember properly, if they're just drinking water, they will, they will usually just take water and go away. They, they don't engage. Uh, they only engage if wasp comes close to the hive, if I remember that. All right. Is there any more questions? All right. Let me just see. Um, uh, we answered that one. Uh, OK. Uh, uh, which part of the bee takes honey out of those cones? Proboscis. Uh, can you say that again? Because I never learned that word in School of English. It's the proboscis. It's like a long uh, tongue. Uh, the long tongue. Yeah, that's right. All right. Just to let you know, just yesterday, uh, there was a bee which uh, crash landed next to our house. Uh, you, you, uh, uh, for those who are watching, you can actually help them if you choose to. Uh, would you be able to tell us a little bit more about Abraham? Uh, if, if you want, you can create a bee bath, like how you would do a bird bath. Uh, take a saucer or a plate, fill it with some water, uh, put some pebbles in because uh, they can drown in that water. So leave a little pebble or some, some wood so that they can safely sit on it and drink water. Uh, if they're exhausted, maybe give them a little honey or sugar syrup, something like that would, uh, would help. That's right. So, so don't be stingy. Put a few, few, a little bit of sh sugar in the water because bees gonna really love you. And as you were, as we were talking, I had a message from, uh, from um, Stembra Park actually, uh, which showed the graffiti, which says this: "When we go, we'll take you out with us." In other words, what they're saying is, when the bees are not there to pollinate, the, the food um, will be in jeopardy. Uh, if I'm, if I'm, if I remember also properly. United Nations actually pronounce B uh, very important. The most important creature. Um, it, more important than the honeybees are the solitary bees because nobody actually looks after them. So the wild bees, the solitary bees, if you can help them out, you can build a, a, a habitat or a small nest for them. Uh, I, I have uh, the ways that you can do that and I will provide it to Pastor Tejan and he can put it up. Uh, a complete uh, list of how you can build it with complete instructions are there. Uh, I will pass it on to Pastor Dan. Also, oh, excellent. yeah, that, that, that would be excellent. Uh, somebody has a bumblebee as well in their home. Uh, I hope you feed them well and let them live uh, a lo long life and prosperous. Have more questions coming in. Why it does uh, why it does bees sting when threatened? That is their defense mechanism. It is something that they do as a last resort. Uh, bees, if when they sting mammals, they die because the stinger uh, gets stuck in our skin. Our skin is thicker. And in, when, it, when that happens, it kind of rips out part of their bodies and they die. When bees sting some animals with thinner skins, like other insects, they don't die. But when they sting mammals or, or humans, they kind of die. So it's kind of... Uh, a, a last resort. That is right. I can confirm that. Uh, so if you ever get stung by the bee, you will always see the stinger in your skin. 
and um, we will die. Yeah, uh, the bee will die. That's for sure. Also, there is two theories on this. I'm not sure which one to believe, um, but some people are saying you should remove the sting as quickly as possible. There is that. And but there... other ones are saying that actually by removing the stinger, you are pressing in more poison from the stinger. Yeah. And so, uh, so if there is any beekeeper there, make it sure you write in the comment which one is the right way to go. Yeah. Uh, uh, Somebody is asking why there, why there are not any king bees. Why there are not any king bees? Yes. God didn't create them. <laughs> That's why. Uh, uh, Abraham is right. God did not uh, think that they need a king. Uh, I think they only have one. Uh, so, uh, any more questions? Let me just see. Um, um, well, it, that, that's right. When it comes to, uh, could bees sting other bees? Uh, they can sting. I don't. And they can sting other insects. Uh, they will not uh, die. They typically die only when it uh, the stinger is pulled out. Typically, with thicker skin in in mammals or. Or That's right. In, and if, if, I, if I remember properly from the days of my father, um, there would be occasionally uh, wars between the different hives. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and then usually that's where that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that they would, uh, but otherwise, um, otherwise they would never use that for or anything else except defending mainly from hornets and from other things which are... There, there are some moths that steal honey from certain hives. Um, but they mostly do it in the dark uh, when the bees are resting. Uh, bees tend to warn uh, other uh, mammals or things that are approaching by something like a Mexican wave, where they, they move like a Mexican wave and kind of flash uh, to scare off uh, uh, anything that's coming before they sting because uh, stingers is kind of a last option for them. That is correct. Uh, you also need to, to know uh, that uh, bees do love uh, any flowers, but yes. they are attracted by the color. Is that right? Yeah, they, they, uh, uh, here's a tip, uh, question. How many eyes do bees have? If you can put your answer in quickly, let's see if you, you know how many eyes do bees have. All right, somebody is saying that uh, if you get stung, you need to remove the stinger by the knife as quickly as possible. That way you would actually remove by, uh, Pressing more poison into your. Um, uh, somebody's asking why the bees are so hairy, because they don't have a shavers, uh, and uh, it is really hard for them to be. God made them that way. I'm sure it has uh, some protection as well as. Yeah. The, the hair is what is used to actually uh, collect the pollen. pollen. Oh. Now, uh, when when I send you, I will send you some links that will actually show you uh, in magnification how they pull off the pollen from, from their bodies and, and put it into their pollen sacs that you will be able to see. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and just to let you know, a small interesting fact as well is, maybe I'm not correct, maybe I forgot, but the hives are sterile, if that's right, if I remember properly, that they're able to, um, if I remember properly, they, they, keep, they clean it all the time by no. using, be using the, the, the type of saliva which actually keeps it uh, extreme, I'm not sure it's the right word sterile, but it's certainly extremely it's clean. Extremely clean, uh, the temperature is regulated, uh, which is a very interesting fact, is how they manage to do it. Uh, they regulate it. Uh, the fact that uh, a typical hive can have upwards of 50,000 bees. So very, very interesting to see how they, they live together as, as a community and a colony. Make sure as well, guys, that when you go to, for the walks, if you do see the bees and you're in nature, and especially talking about the wild bees, uh, you don't go too close because even humans who are not allergic to the stung of the bee, after a certain amount of stungs actually can, mm -hmm. can cause a, a mm -hmm. severe allergic reaction which can take your life. But they're you know, very good, but certainly keep safe as well. Um, any more questions? Let me just have a look. Um, the number of eyes that a bee has is five. There are two main compound eyes and three on top of the head. So somebody got five, that is correct. All right, excellent stuff. Uh, uh, somebody again asked, uh, what is the queen bee eating? You answered that many times. Royal jelly. She is fed on a specific diet uh, of royal jelly and she's the only one who gets that other than the uh, larvae for the first three days. That's right. Also another interesting fact for everybody, I just remembered it. 
a little well of interesting facts about bees at the moment. <laughs> Did you know, guys, that that um, that a poison of bee uh, by the uh, if you if you use a one gram of gold and you have a one gram of poison of uh, bee, actually uh, poison of bees costs more than a gram of gold, and because actually uh, 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 extracting the poison is extremely extremely it actually has this to the bees as well and that's the reason probably but it's used in many medical uh, uh fields if i remember properly now the royal jelly is actually very rich in protein vitamins vitamin b lipids sugar hormones minerals potassium magnesium calcium and iron and they're called as a superfood they also contain something called acetylcholine which is something that in bodies which help us and give us instruction for any movement in the body. So this, we actually get fed on this royal jelly. Now, some people try to sell this for humans, but scientifically it's not very much proved that royal jelly is making much significant changes for us, but people still kind of buy it. But they're supposed to be very much different and that does the main difference for the queen bee. It's the person who gets this royal jelly fed for lifelong is the queen. Excellent, we're gonna stop here. Uh, uh, many more things we can say about bees. Big thank you to both of you. I'm going to just unmute everybody if that's right, guys. Let's give a big clap to our friends who gave us this. Oh, we're going to say a big buzz. A big buzz. Let's try a big, big, big buzz and a clap at the same time. I'm unmuting everybody. Yeah. 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 Yeah.